I saw my guardian angel, who ordered me to follow him. In a moment I was in a misty place full of fire in which there was a great crowd of suffering souls. They were praying fervently, but to no avail, for themselves, only we can come to their aid. The flames which were burning them did not touch me at all. My guardian angel did not leave me for an instant. I asked these souls what their greatest suffering was. They answered me in one voice that their greatest torment was longing for God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I saw my guardian angel, who ordered me to follow him. In a moment I was in a misty place full of fire in which there was a great crowd of suffering souls. They were praying fervently, but to no avail, for themselves, only we can come to their aid. The flames which were burning them did not touch me at all. My guardian angel did not leave me for an instant. I asked these souls what their greatest suffering was. They answered me in one voice that their greatest torment was longing for God. I saw Our Lady visiting the souls in purgatory. The souls call her the Star of the Sea. She brings them refreshments. I wanted to talk with them some more, but my guardian angel beckoned me to leave. We went out of that prison of suffering. I heard an interior voice, which said, My mercy does not want this, but justice demands it. Since that time, I am in closer communion with the suffering souls. Diary 20 But do we have any other evidence that the deceased needs prayer? Yes, the Church teaches us about purgatory and the need to pray for the holy souls. The Church even dedicates the month of November as a special time of remembrance of the souls in purgatory. A number of the living have visited with the dead. Saint Faustina was one of them. The Apostle of Divine Mercy wrote in her diary about the time her guardian angel led her on a visit to purgatory. Saint Faustina wants us to join her in devoting prayers and good works to aid the holy souls on their journey to God and life everlasting. One of the days of prayer in the Divine Mercy Novena is dedicated to interceding for the holy souls suffering in purgatory. We are called to pray the chaplet for the dying to speed them on their way home to heaven. Many people, including devout Christians, are depressed to walk in them by day and frightened of going near them at night. This is a form of superstition that isn't supported by a Catholic understanding of the invisible world. In fact, we miss a beautiful opportunity when we indulge in this fear. Why? Because cemeteries are a visual call to prayer. They remind us of the souls who have gone before us men and women who don't want to be forgotten any more than we do. Now if the persons whose mortal remains are buried in the nearby cemetery are in heaven, they are not in need of prayer and sacrifice, if they are in hell, they are beyond such help, but if they are not in heaven or hell, we have a duty and the ability to offer them aid. The souls in purgatory are called holy because they can sin no more and are guaranteed to enter heaven eventually, they are called poor because they cannot help themselves in their current state and can do nothing to lessen its pain or duration, instead, they are dependent on the prayers of others to relieve their suffering and hasten their purification. The invisibility of the spiritual realm can make it seem as though there were a clear divide between it and our everyday life, or what we call reality. We forget that our five senses are designed to apprehend material things, we do not naturally have the faculties to apprehend spiritual realities. When, according to God's will, spiritual beings such as angels appear, they must take on an appearance that is perceivable to our sense of sight. In a similar way, the souls of the deceased have been permitted to appear to mankind. 
Such apparitions have been recorded for thousands of years. It is a mystery why God allows certain souls to seek spiritual aid, and why some people among the living though very few are able to communicate with them. We must trust His provident will. Such visitations are very rare, but follow a pattern. For example, these souls usually seek out saintly men and women whose holiness can benefit them spiritually. When the soul's purification is complete, or when their helper has given all the assistance that they are able, the visits cease. The relationship between poor souls and the devout persons they visit is a beautiful example of the communion of saints in action. It affirms the unexpected ways in which God works. How can we help the poor souls? Now that we better understand the suffering of the poor souls, what can we do to help them? Doing so is a great act of charity. It benefits our own souls, as well. Our prayer for them is capable not only of helping them, but also of making their intercession for us effective. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 958 Here are some ways in which we can offer spiritual aid through the mercy of God. 1. Arrange to have Masses said for the holy souls. Requests from souls in purgatory have affirmed that the Mass is the most powerful prayer that can be offered on their behalf. Pray for the holy souls. When someone dies, we should not assume that they are in heaven, even if they were a very good person. We should commence praying them for them immediately. Pray the rosary, especially. We are told that invoking Our Lady's intercession under her title of the Immaculate Conception can lead to a particular outpouring of grace for the poor souls. 3. Offer sacrifices, alms, and mortifications. Even the smallest hidden sacrifice benefits them immediately, according to the testimony of a soul in purgatory. Now that we have learned about the souls in purgatory and the charity that we can offer them, let's conclude by praying this traditional prayer for the holy souls, O most gentle heart of Jesus, ever present in the blessed sacrament, ever consumed with burning love for the poor captive souls in purgatory, have mercy on the souls of thy departed servants. Be not severe in thy judgments, but let some drops of thy precious blood fall upon the devouring flames. And do thou, O merciful Savior, send thy holy angels to conduct them to a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Amen. Please subscribe to this channel for more Catholic content. Thank you for watching, God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.